Hey everybody, my name is Capcom and you are watching Studio Sweat On Demand. This is the beginner spinner video. This video is good for first time spinners or um, anyone that's never been directed as far as you know how to use their spin bike, how to set it up, proper form. I'm not an actor. I think that's probably going to be apparent right away. I'll just talk to you like I would talk to anybody that's coming through the doors for the first time here at Studio Sweat and hopefully that'll help you out. Um, I am a trainer and a spin instructor here at Studio Sweat, which is in San Diego, California. Yay! Yes, I live here. It's awesome. That is where we film our classes that you'll see uh, on Studio Sweat On Demand that I know you're going to be taking and you're going to love them. Um, we'll put fresh content out there every week. If you have a mobile device, an iPad, an iPhone, internet ready TV, anything like that, you'll be able to watch our classes or download them. Um, you also need a bike, so if you don't already have a bike, you can get one through Studio Sweat On Demand. We, the bikes that we sell are the bikes that we use in the studio that you see behind me here. They're the Star Star Trek Spinner Pro bikes. They're incredible and we can have it shipped right to your house. Um, let's see, everything in this video is my opinion, so I'm not representing any other companies, it's just my opinion, uh, which is based on my experience and expertise. Spinning is what we're talking about, and it is an absolutely incredible workout if it's done right. I do all kinds of workouts from boot camp, triathlon training, um, resistance training, which I'm a huge fan of, um, which is also all, when I say resistance training, it's interchangeable with weightlifting and um, sculpting, anything like that. So um, I always come back to spinning though because it's such an awesome workout. After every single spin class, it looks like you get hit by a fire hose if you do it right. There should be sweat dripping out of every single pore of your body and that's awesome because to me anyways, it just feels like that's fat melting off my body, which is great. He doesn't want that. Um, but if you're not set up properly on your bike, you can get injured and that's not good. So that's what we're gonna talk about today is bike set up in proper form when you're riding in class. I've been to um, a ton of classes where I've seen new people come in and the instructor doesn't even notice that they're there because there's so many bodies and so much going on. Everybody's just there to get their own thing done, you know. And so I'll get on my bike and class will start and I'll look over at this poor new person and their knees will be up in their grill and their form is just awful and I so badly want to help them but it's not my place. And you know, that's kind of sad because that person will probably never come back and they'll be missing out on an incredible workout, which is a big time bummer. So that's what we're going to talk about today is how to get you set up properly on your spin bike and how to ride with good form. We'll talk about cadence and resistance and all kinds of good stuff like that. I have a couple of people here to help me um, that are, are volunteering to help with uh, showing you good bike setup. So you're gonna meet Omar and Brooke in just a minute. And we'll actually even do a few rides so that you can see how it works when you're in spin class too. So follow me, let's get it. Okay. So one of the first things that we want to talk about as far as getting yourself prepared for a spin class is what to bring. You definitely need to bring water and I'm going to strongly suggest that you hydrate before you get to spin class that way you don't get there and you're thirsty. So you want to drink you know water before you come to spin class. I would bring like 16, 20 ounces of water with you. Most spin classes are an hour so you're going to want at least that much water with you. So don't forget your water. That's really important. You also want to bring a, ha a hand towel. I mean some places might issue them but just have a hand towel available so that you're, you can wipe your handlebars and your face down because you should be dripping sweat. If not, you need to increase your resistance. Okay, the other thing is shoes. We'll talk about shoes. You want a stiff bottom shoe. You don't have to have cycling shoes. You'll see a lot of people have these special shoes. They're not necessary. If you're gonna wear just a regular, you know, cross trainer or running shoe, that's fine. Just wear something that has a stiff sole. You don't wanna wear anything like heads that um, have too much bend to them. So make sure you find something that has a stiff sole. If you are gonna use cycling shoes, that's great. Most studios are gonna support that. Most spin bikes you can get. You can put regular outdoor pedals on your spin bike and that's fine. Um, most places are gonna have um, SPD cleats or you can get low cleats as well. So if you have shoes that you use for your outdoor bike already, those can usually be used on an indoor um, cycling bike as well. So um, as far as what to wear, 
clothing wise you can wear whatever you can move in comfortably the only thing i really suggest is that you wear pants that are fitted you don't want to wear loose bottom sweatpants or anything like that because in some um, spin on some spin bikes those might get caught in the chain so think about wearing things that are uh, more fitted or um, shorts that's probably a better way to go so that's really all you need and a good attitude <laughs> Uh, uh, to take a spin class. So we've got Omar and Brooke that are going to help us. Omar, Brooke, did you bring your water? I did. Did you bring your towel? Yes, I did. Oh, wait, I have yours. <laughs> Yay. Okay, good. And Brooke is actually wearing cycling shoes, and Omar just has stiff sold tennis shoes on. So good job, you guys. Um, so the first thing that we'll talk about is bike setup. Um, Usually when people come in, I greet them. Hi, Omar. I'm Kat. Hey, nice Kat. to meet Good you. Good to meet you. Welcome. Welcome, Brooke. Hi. Hey, nice what's going on? You. Nice to meet you. The first thing that we'll talk about is how to get you set up properly on your bike. Sounds so, good. So um, before you get on, the first thing that I'll have you do is just kind of lift your leg like this. That'll give me a general idea. Okay. Take it up to hip height, and that's going to tell me approximately how high put, to put the seat, though I may not get it right. Part of it depends on the length of your femurs. Um, this is the adjustment that you, uh, this is the tool that you'll use to adjust um, the height of the seat, the fore aft position of the bike, and the handlebars. They're all the same. And it's just a threading system. So you know it's lefty loosey, righty tighty, typical. So you want to unthread it all the way, pull out, adjust it where you want it to go, and then it'll pop in, and then you just lock it back in place. You want to make sure that it's really solid because you don't want it wiggling around. Like for example, if you look at this one and it's not threaded, it's gonna be really wobbly. And you don't want that. That's gonna be a really uncomfortable ride. So you wanna make sure that these push pins are really, really locked in tight when you're riding, especially on the handlebars because that can be a really annoying thing when they're shaking around. So, all right, ready to ready. give it a try? I'm okay, ready. so that's too high. Yes. My bad. <laughs> okay, we're gonna drop it down a little bit. I'm gonna guess right about there for you but we won't know until you get all the way on so hop on okay while you're doing that okay Brooke I'm gonna have you lift your um, knee up to hip height as well okay I think that that actually looks like it might be in a good spot for you already so you get Great. go ahead and hop on okay and then I'm gonna double check Omar's over here so another thing that we need to talk about before we even really get the seat height solid is the, the foot position over the pedal. Um, and so when you put your foot on the pedal, you want the ball of the foot over the center of the pedal. A lot of people think that it's um, you know one of those things where you should stick your foot all the way in the toe cage if you're using a toe cage. Um, but that's so go ahead and cram it in there. That's not the ball of the foot over the center of the pedal. So I'm gonna have him back his foot out just a little bit, right about there. And then I'm gonna pull up. This is how these lock in. It may be different on your spin bike, but this is how these lock in. And you can tuck it back in if you want to. But again, you want the ball of the foot over the center of the pedal. Um, you don't want the middle of your foot over the center of the pedal. Brooke over here has spinning shoes or she has cycling shoes. And if you look at the bottom, sorry, if you look at the bottom, <laughs> hey, Brooke, what's up? Perfect. If you look at where this is positioned, it is centered over the ball of her foot. If you don't um, do that, your foot's going to fall asleep. If it's jammed all the way in there, your foot, if your foot is jammed all the way in that toe cage, your foot's going to fall asleep, and that's not a good thing. And then another thing is you lose a lot of power in those cases, and you don't want to lose power you want a powerful pedal stroke and so in order for that to happen ball the foot over the center of the pedal okay so Omar is there we're gonna go back to Omar and then we're gonna check his seat height um, what you're looking for as far as seat height is when his, his leg is extended down like it is here you want a 5 to 20 degree bend in the knee what you don't want is the knee to lock out that's not good um, because then you can hyperextend your knee. So you want a slight bend in the knee, but you want the leg as extended as possible when you hit the bottom of that pedal stroke. So go ahead and pedal around for me. And that looks really good because his leg is pretty much fully extended, but his knee is definitely not locking out. So I think we got lucky Excellent. on your seat height, <laughs> yay. All right, so Brooke, let's check yours. Okay. How's it feel when you do that? Does it feel like your seat's locking out at all or your knee is locking no, out at all? It feels great. Man, lucky twice. Okay, so again, if it feels like your knee is locking out, 
you probably need to drop your seat a little bit. If it feels like there's quite a bit of bend in it, you probably need to raise your seat a little bit because again, you want a full extension of the leg without the knee locking out. So that is the seat height. Okay. Second thing that we look at is the fore aft position of the seat, so the front and back position. Um, so go ahead and bring your feet so that they're equal distance from the ground. That will uh, give me what I need to look for. What I'm looking for here is um, his knee position in relationship to his ankle. I pretty much want to see his knee right over the top of his ankle. and. We got really lucky on that too. I swear this wasn't scripted. It wasn't scripted. Okay. Yeah, when we do this, how far back on the seat should we be sitting? That's a that's a really good question. Thank you. You're a superstar. <laughs> you should get paid for this. <laughs> you should be all the way back in your seat. So that's a really good question. So he was saying, how far back am I on my seat? Should I sit on the front? Should I sit on the back? And you want to be all the way back in that seat. And you don't want to test this position here to see if the knee is right over the ankle until you're sitting on the back of your seat. So really good really good question so on the back of your seat I'm looking down and he's got a nice straight line there so that is the fore aft position of the seat again you want to bring those feet so that they're equal distance from the ground you're looking at the front leg to see if the knee is over the ankle you want a 90 degree angle on that front knee okay so you don't want it to be acute it can be a little bit acute but you definitely don't want an obtuse angle here or you could hyperextend the knee as well okay so that's the fore aft position of the seat you guys have any questions so far? No. Okay, let's check great. yours. Okay. <laughs> Man, we're lucky. Yours is right <laughs> there too. I think we're good on yours because her knee is right over the top of the ankle there. That looks really good too. The third adjustment that we'll talk about um, would be the handlebars. And the, that's the last thing that we look at. Handlebars are kind of based on comfort, but there are a couple of things that we look at. And like, I'll ask you, do you have any back problems? No. Nope. That I should be aware of? None. No, do you? No. Okay, if either of them had said yes, I would probably think about keeping their handlebars, handlebars a little bit higher, but neither of them have any back problems. So I'm gonna have you lean forward, okay? And one of the things I'm seeing with Omar like right away is his back's kind of rounded. When you um, lean forward, you wanna make sure that you're hinging from the hips. So it's almost like there's a bar right here and you're folding over that uh, bar to keep your upper body nice and long. Okay, perfect. So how does that feel comfort-wise? Feels good. Okay, that's good. Um, for some people, their handlebars are gonna be a little bit higher than the seat, but if, you're, if your back is good, and you're, especially when you become a more advanced rider, your handlebars and your seat are gonna be about the same level. So I'm gonna have Omar hop off for just a second. And what you can see with his is it's already set up that way. And again, that was just lucky, but his handlebars and his seat are about the same level. That's what you're looking for. But again, what did I say if someone has back problems? Anybody? Anybody? We're gonna lift higher. It up. Yeah, you're going to lift it up. Those handlebars are going to be higher. So, um, and, and sometimes not even if you have back problems, but if someone's new and I can tell that they have a little bit of um, a posture problem, I will bring their handlebars up just a little bit higher to be safe because as they become um, a better rider, they can drop their handlebars down a little bit. I'd rather err on the side of handing, having the handlebars a little high. But again, it's really based on comfort. So that's what I'll ask them. When they lean forward, are they comfortable? So Brooke, when you lean forward, does it feel comfortable? It feels great. Okay, mm -hmm. so that, that's what you're looking for. You don't want them uncomfortable. If they're uncomfortable, um, usually it means you're gonna lift them. If you see they're really high, then you need to drop the handlebars down a little bit. But you can see hers are shaking around mm -hmm. a little bit. That would tell me right then that I need to lock that down. Yes. Okay, so reach forward again, and now when she's riding, it looks a lot more solid. So you wanna feel solid when you're riding. Omar, hop back on. Okay, so we've got the, the seat in the right position, the handlebars in the right position. Now let's talk about upper body because upper body position is just as impar important as lower body position. And one of the most common mistakes I see is people will ride with their arms, their elbows locked out. And that's really not good for your back. So you wanna always try and keep a soft elbow, okay? Um, not locked out. And as far as your hand position, there's, you can ride with your hands in a lot of different positions. My favorite is to ride, ride with the back of my hands like that, touching the handlebars, but um, that's not necessary. Wherever it's comfortable to place your hands, that's where you're gonna place them. You will see people go onto their forearms. Those are usually people that are outdoor riders. And that's, that's fine, as long as you can keep your lungs open and your back more flat. In spin class, 
which is good. Brooke, your posture is awesome. <laughs> in um, spin class, you're not trying to get aerodynamic. That's a lot of times why people, you know, in, on outdoor bikes will tuck down like that. Not necessary in spin class, but it's okay as long as, like I said, your back is flat and your lungs are open. So, again, soft elbows when you're riding. Got it, Omar? Soft, soft elbows. elbows. Thank you. And then another thing that I see all the time, especially when we're riding with heavier resistance doing a hill climb, is people will have a white knuckle grip. So. Uh, that is what not to do. Your back is totally tensing up when you've got that white knuckle grip. So a lot of times I'll even tell people to like lift their fingertips up and just relax because those handlebars are really just there for balance and to give you something to lean on a little bit. So keep your grip light and keep your elbows soft. You want to um, hinge forward from the hips, not the waist. So this is Omar. I'm going to go like this. See how his back is a little round? Here I would say he's hinging more from the waist, okay? And so I would ask him to back up on his seat a little bit, pretend there's a bar right here, and try and fold that upper body forward from the hips and look how much more length he got in doing so. You always wanna keep your shoulder blades in your back pockets. That's what I like to say, shoulder blades in the back pockets. It's okay to let those shoulders roll to the front a little bit as long as the blades are in the back pocket and your lungs are nice and open. So get your upper bodies as long as you can Scoot to the back of the seat and hinge forward at the hips to get that upper body nice and long. Okay, so as far as the hands, guys, no white knuckles. White no knuckles. white knuckles. No white knuckles. And the elbows are not to be locked. locked. That's right. Okay, so you got that on the upper body position. Um, what else? And you sit on the front of your seat or the back of your seat? Back, back of the seat. Back of the seat, absolutely. All right, so before we even talk about standing up, I want to talk about resistance. Um, the resistance on these bikes is added using this red knob here, um, right here. It's going to be different on different bikes. When we talk about adding resistance, we might also say adding a gear or something like that. On these spin bikes, you're just going to turn the knob to the right, and there's a positive there, and that's going to add resistance. Resistance determines how challenging the class is. That's one of the great things about spinning is you determine how hard the class is. You have an instructor or a trainer that facilitates the class, but how difficult the class is, is going to be determined by you because you set your resistance. So one of the things you want to be careful of is not to ride without resistance. You'll see people in spin class and their legs will be like, oh, like going really fast. Don't be jealous of those people. They're probably riding without resistance and not doing themselves any favors. Be like, mm -hmm. okay. So you always want to ride with some resistance. So Omar, start pedaling. So I'm going to back his resistance all the way off. Do you feel anything there? Do you feel no. like there's any resistance at all? Anything squeezing that flywheel? It's pretty light. It's really light. Yeah. Okay, so you want to, at a minimum, get rode under the tire. You want to feel like there's a little bit of resistance and a catch. Do you feel like there's a little yeah, bit of resistance? Yeah, starting to feel it now. Okay, perfect. So, always some resistance when you're riding. Don't ever ride the spin bikes without resistance. It's bad for your knees, okay? And it's you're not really burning calories when you do that especially when you're standing up. And in a lot of spin classes and in the studio sweat, on-demand classes, we will be doing some standing. So I want you guys to make sure you both have a little bit of resistance on. By the way, that red knob is on these bikes is also your emergency brake, meaning if you push down on this, it's going to stop those pedals from rotating. So if your foot comes out of the toe cage or um, out of the clip, you can push down on that red knob on these bikes. Most, most spin bikes are going to have some sort of emergency brake and it'll stop the pedals from rotating. Okay guys, so when you're standing, hands should be to the outside of the handlebars. So go ahead and try to stand up. I know it's a little bit scary. Try to stand up and okay. pedal. So you can do it, you can do it. Two things at once. Two things at once. <laughs> Try Omar, you can do it. Okay, so when you're standing, you guys, your hands should be on the outside of the handlebars. That's just a good balanced position. Your um, bun should be over the front of the seat, usually, and your shoulders are usually gonna be over the handlebars. I like to pretend, or tell people to pretend their hips are a bucket of water, and the idea is to not spill. And I'll tell people don't wag the tail, which is taking it from side to side like this. So if you pretend your hips are a bucket of water and the idea is not to spill, you're gonna keep those hips nice and stable. So Brooke, maybe mm -hmm. like show me like a wag the tail motion. That's what not to do. And when you see people and they're bobbing up and down, can you show me like a bob up and down? 
That's what not to do. If my hips are a bucket of water, I am sploshing water all over the place here. So you want to keep those hips dialed in, your buns over the front of the seat, front of the seat and your shoulders over the handlebars like that. So that's really, really important when you're riding. Don't let those hips go crazy. So that's your um, riding position from a standing position. When you take a seat, again, you're going to sit on the back of the back saddle. Of the back of your seat. You got it. Oh, that's a good point. So a lot of times your instructors are, your spin instructors are going to call it the saddle. That's fine. Seat, saddle, same thing. Okay. Um, what else do we need to go over? Drop back or hover position. Um, Sometimes in classes, okay, you guys stand up again. Sometimes in spin classes, your instructor will have you drop back a little bit um, with your hips more towards the center of the seat instead of um, over the front of the seat. And um, if you have any back problems, you do not want to do that. You know, just avoid the hover, even if your instructor tells you to go into a hover. Where if, should I go if I have a back problem? You just want to go into a normal standing position at that point. So that's a good question. So go ahead and start pedaling. Mm -hmm. Okay, so hover, drop back position. When you do that, you're working the hamstrings and the glutes a little bit more, but again, she's keeping her back nice and flat. So if you have any back problems, just avoid that position all, all, all together, and you may not even see it in your spin class. Okay, all right, so that is general bike setup. I don't think we missed anything. What, the last thing that I like to tell you guys is go at your own pace. When you first take a spin class, you guys, you're not gonna do everything that everybody else does in the class. They're going to be standing when you just need to take a break. Just take a break. It usually takes about three spin classes before you feel like you're going to get through it without dying. <laughs> but you will. You'll get there. So just keep trying and go at your own pace. You set your resistance. Sit down if you need to sit down and you're going to feel like you're going to get there pretty soon. We all had our first day. Okay, so now what I want to talk about is cadence, and we're going to do that. I'm actually going to put my hair back. I just did hair and makeup for this video. Mm -hmm. If you're on camera, you do that too. But I'm going to pull my hair back because when you're riding, you don't want your hair on your face or anything like that. Even Omar has pretty <laughs> hair, and I've seen, yeah, he's pulled his hair back before too. Yep. Okay, so let's talk about cadence, but let's do that with music because we do ride with music. Some instructors say that that's not critical, and it's not critical, but it's important to me, so we're going to talk about it. Okay, guys, we are set up properly on our bikes. We're ready to go. Ready to go. Are you nervous? Yep. <laughs> you should be. This is a really, really intense class. All right, no, I'm just kidding. You can do it. You can do it. Remember, at your own pace. That's one of the most important things. We're standing. You need to sit. Sit. All we're going to do here is go over cadence. Cadence means pedal speed. So if you hear your instructor talk about cadence, that's what they are referring to. How fast are those legs going? That's your pedal speed. You want to make sure that you've got a nice full pedal stroke, which means you're not only pushing in the front, that's natural, you're pulling up in the back as well. So I like to use the analogy that you pretend there's gum on the bottom of your shoe and you're scraping it off with a little kick back. So make sure that you're using your hamstrings and your buns to pull the back of that pedal stroke up as well. So full rotation, just making circles. Got it? Got it. All right, elbows soft. Okay. Elbows stop, check. No white knuckles. Hinging forward from the hip, not the waist, okay? Just keep that back flat, shoulder blades back and down. All right, looking good. Right now, we're gonna make sure we've got some gear on because we always ride with some gear. This is a slower cadence. I'm not gonna talk to you about all the different cadences and give you numbers or anything like this. This is more simulating a hill climb. One, two, one, two, one, two. Again, make sure you're pulling up in the back. If I tell you to add a gear or if your instructor tells you to add a gear, all that means is make it one level harder for you. For you. So go ahead and give it a tap, add a gear. Now sometimes your instructor is going to give you a specific order, like turn on a quarter turn. You may not even have a knob, <laughs> so just make it one level harder for you. It depends on the spin bike. They're all a little bit different, guys. So again, adding a gear just means one level harder for you, okay? All right, now I'm gonna have you take a little gear off and we're gonna speed up our cadence. Sound good? All right, so start to build your cadence a little faster. I do use the beat a lot in my class. So now we're going at this tempo, and it's one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. 
If I looked out and I saw someone bouncing in the saddle, also known as the seat, I would tell them that they needed to add a gear. Yes, okay, so everybody, not because you're bouncy, but just because I want you to make it a little tougher, add a gear. Now try to keep that same cadence, in other words, the same pedal speed. Breathe in through your nose, out your mouth, shoulder blades back and down, soft elbows. Tempo goes one, two, one, two. Complete pedal stroke. Both legs working equally as hard, okay? Push, pull, push, pull, push, pull. You got it. Good job. Fat burning zone is between 65 and 80% maximum heart rate. Sometimes you're gonna hear your uh, instructor talk about a rate of perceived exertion. Scale of one to 10. One being easy, I could do this all day long. 10, death knocking at your door. You can't even breathe. You wanna stay between a six and a half and an eight and a half on that scale. Where are you guys? I'm really good at a six and a half. About a six and a half? Yeah. Eight! Omar, push it harder. Nice job, let's slow it down. Coming out of the saddle, hands to the outside, guys. Right? When you're out of the saddle, where are your hands? Outside. Outside. Brooke's got hers up here. That's where she's comfortable. Omar's are back here. See, Brooke's on the horns. That's what I call those. Call those. Omar's in a little tighter. That's fine. Elbow soft when you're up top. Breathing in through your yeah. nose out of your mouth. Now let's say I increase, I say to you guys, increase your cadence. Here we go. Dig it out faster. Remember, well actually we haven't talked about this. Take a seat. When you take a seat, you're on the back of your saddle, saddle seat, okay? Very good. What was I going to talk about? <laughs> oh man. Knee placement. Make sure you don't ride with your knees bowed out like this. You guys, you want your knees over the top of those feet. What not to do. What to do. Keep them right in line with those toes. As far as where the weight is, inside of the ball of the foot. When you're riding, whether it's sitting or standing, you want the weight on the inside of the ball of the foot. Heels dropped, stay off of the toes. So see how my toes are dropped? That is what not to do. Push those heels down, keep your foot on a plateau. All right, you guys ready to try standing one more time? All right, we're gonna do little jumps. You're gonna come one inch forward on your seat and one inch up. Hips are stable like in a bucket of water, remember? Come up slowly, hands to the outside, get stable. Here's some jumps. Speed it up now, cadence higher. Three, two, in the saddle, down. Eight, seven, six, five, jump, four, three, two, jump! Looking good, guys, go four, three, two, nice, take it down, give me something to correct. Give me something to correct. You guys are too good, jump. Three, two, one, take it down. Three, two, last jump, guys. Up, three, two, one, you're ready. You guys are ready. I have nothing more to teach you. Nice job, high five, high five. We're ready, you're ready, let's go.